Medicare for all, single payer, public option, universal coverage. Before you know where you stand in healthcare, it's almost like you need a dictionary to define the terms selection season. And since the presidential race is heating up and you may not have that dictionary, we brought in some experts to set us all straight. I'm very happy to welcome the co-author from Obamacare to Trump Care, Harry Nelson is right here. Great to be with and you, Dr. Jerry Abram, an undecided voter who you've seen once or twice on Spectrum probably. Great to have you back in the Thank studio. You. So we were talking about some of these terms. I mean, there really are a lot. So let's set the record straight on these a little bit. Could you help define Medicare for all, single payer, public option? Sure. So Medicare for all is an example of a single payer program. Hmm. Starting with single payer as a big concept, it's the idea that there should be a government funded program that everybody pays into and participates in. It sets a minimum level of health coverage, of a health system that everybody participates in. Canada would be a good example. Mm -hmm. Where Medicare for all, is Bernie Sanders originated that term as a single payer model in which everybody uh, pays into being part of this one system. And then if people want to have additional health coverage, either employers or individually, they can elect to do it privately, but they're, everyone's still part of that basic system. And it takes into public option a little bit. So public option is uh, not a whole system. It's basically creating a choice where the government is participating through a health exchange in creating a plan that people can, part that people can elect. And so there's a lot of different versions of it, but basically right. a public option is creating a government option so there's always a guarantee that people can, uh, uh, can buy into some form of health insurance no matter where they are. Which at the bottom line is important that we all get some form of insurance. Dr. Jerry, uh, I wanna ask you for something I know that you're good at, a diagnosis. <laughs> Give us a diagnosis, you know, your lived experience, what you're seeing with respect to patients coming in and how the system is working. Absolutely. I mean, how, where are we standing right now? Um, I think I would start off by saying that this election really matters. Right. Um, it really will affect how people have an access health care. Mm -hmm. um, what we've seen in the last few days with the public charge issue that's coming out of Washington, that is frightening a lot of our patients who may not have doc uh, legal documentation status in this country. Right. Right. They may be afraid to access things like going to your doctor, going to the emergency room because that may jeopardize their green card um, or those processes. So we're already seeing how whatever's happening is affecting people's relationship with their doctor, hospitals, right. and healthcare. Right. So Harry, I mean, there's obviously a lot of Runaway, we have runaway costs. We're experiencing that right now. Costs are out of control. But when we look at some of these different options, walk us in a little bit to the finances around what something like single payer would really look like and something worse the public option. That's that we have. really one of the big questions is how much is it going to cost? What are the tax increases uh, that are going to be necessary to, uh, to afford it? Right. right. All of the proposals we're talking about, public option, Medicare for all, universal coverage, all involve some additional amount of money. Currently, we have a system where about half the people in this country get in, uh, insurance through their employment, and so employers cover part of the burden. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're going to move everybody into a public system, we're going and cover the 28 million people who don't have right. insurance right now, we're talking about uh, billions of dollars more. So the Medicare for All would be the most expensive programs. Like, we don't yet have a number on how many billions. <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, and the public option would be uh, potentially more expensive, but also really unclear. We're trying to keep these costs down. We're also trying to fill these gaps in coverage because all these people, there are some 20 million some odd that are uninsured. Uh, when we look at 2020, and this is something you're thinking about hard, I know that as so many reviewers are as well, uh, you're, you're famously undecided as of now. So of the candidates that are speaking right now, I mean, who's really speaking your language when it well, comes to I really to feel insurance? like we've got a really wide, um, you know, just lots of candidates in the race, right? Yeah. I think you kind of divide them into three categories those that are you know, fervently Medicare for all. We've got people who believe in that vision, but are happy to take uh, steps in that direction. That may take you know, five to 10 years to get to that dream or ideal. Mm -hmm. And there are folks that kind of are more status quo. There's a way to work with the Affordable Care Act, what we have today with some minor tweaks and improvements. Which candidates are, are you really I favorite? think realistically that that middle group is really where America can go. We, we can realistically find ways to finance and that mm -hmm. would improve access to care. Something I did want to mention earlier was that it's one thing to have insurance, right? That's right. coverage. Right. But if that insurance card doesn't get you any health care, what good is it? So really we have to also address things like access. And access comes down to is there are there clinics, are there doctors and mm -hmm. nurses in your community? That all will make a big difference. It's all too. very pragmatic. I won't make you take a political stance right now, but if you were to predict that one of these models would get a little more traction as we enter the rest of this, this season, which one do you think it'll be? I personally think that the uh, public option 
model people, the option that people model like uh, uh, Joe Biden mm -hmm. and Cory Booker are, are backing is probably the most likely to get traction just because it has the greatest likelihood of attracting independent voters. And uh, I have concerns that the uh, Medicare for all model uh, while it's popular in in uh, California, uh, is not going to play as well in some of the swing swing uh, areas. You guys are both being very pragmatic, and I appreciate both the, uh, all the advice from Obamacare. Trump cares the name of the book. Dr. Jerry Abrams, I want to invite side voters. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Really Thanks so much. It.